This is a continuation of day seven of our Viking European Sojourn Tour. So this morning we went to the Belgorod Czech uh, Fortress and Rock Formations and this afternoon we had a free afternoon. So from one o'clock we had lunch and then we had up till six o'clock in the evening to tour the city on our own. Now on our way out on the bus to the Belgorod Czech Fortress, the bus driver and tour guide gave us a tour of the city and we drove past many of its uh, tourist, uh, touristy areas and one of those touristy areas was the Baba Vida Fortress and it turns out that it was only a short 10 minute walk from our boat uh, the Viking Vidar so rather than taking a tour which Viking offered uh, we decided to tour it on, on our own so it's easy to get in it only was a cost of about six uh, Canadian dollars four US dollars you have to pay it in lev which you can get from a local uh, I guess uh, ATM here, you're parked right in the middle of the city so they're easy to find. Now Viking does offer a great tour but the cost was over $100 Canadian or $80 US. The benefit of having a guided tour obviously is that you gain a lot of history, uh, knowledge directly from your tour guide but uh, we found just touring out on our own they had a lot of placards especially around the center section where they had lots of uh, museums with information was sufficient for us and we like exploring on our own so that's why we did it. So a little history from Wikipedia about the Baba Vida Fortress. First of all, the Baba Vida Fortress is a medieval castle and it's located in Vidin in northwestern Bulgaria. And it's the town's primary landmark, which includes the original battlements. Now, the Baba Vida Castle is the only fully preserved medieval castle in all of Bulgaria. When you get into the museum mass uh, section of the, the fort, which is the central section, you'll see a map of the original fortress layout, and you can see that it was actually tied into the Danube River. This castle actually sits right on the Danube River, and it was connected, and they were used to flood the moat around the entire fortress, so that was uh, an extra deterrent to actually conquer this particular fortress. So from Wikipedia, I'm informed that the construction of the castle first began in the 10th century at the place of the ancient Roman castel Bononia. The building of Baba Vida is tied to a legend according to which the Danubian Bulgarian king who ru ruled Vidin had three daughters, Vida, Kula and Gamza. Prior to his death, he divided his rule, his realm among the three. Vida, the eldest, was given Vidin and leads north to the Carpathians. Kula was awarded Zasikar and Timok Valley and Gamza was, the, was to rule the lands west up to Morera. Although Gamza and Kula married to drunkard and warlike nobles, Vida remained unmarried and built the castle in her city. The name of the castle means Granny Vida, so Baba is Granny. Therefore, Baba Vida Fortress served as part of Vidin's main defensive installations during the course of the Middle Ages and acted as the citadel of the most important fortress of northwestern Bulgaria. The Baba Vida stronghold was stood an eight month long siege by the Byzantine fortress led by Basil II. It was enlarged and modernized during the rule of Tsar Ivan uh, Ratzmir in between 9, 1356 and 1396 as whose capital it served. Between 1365 and 1369, the castle was in Hungarian hands. Vidin was suddenly attacked by the forces of Louis I of Hungary, but it took several months to conquer Baba Vida. In 1369, Ivan Ratzmir managed to regain control of his capital, albeit having to remain under, under Hungarian overlordship. In 1388, the Ottomans invaded Ratzmir's land and forced him to become their vassal. In 1396, he joined an anti-Ottoman crusade led by the King of Hungary, Sigmundson, placing his resources at the crusader's disposal. The crusade ended in the disastrous Battle of Nicopolis at Nicopol, Bulgaria, with the Ottomans capturing most of Ratzmir's domain shortly thereafter in 1397. 
So under the control of the Ottoman Empire, who ruled Bulgaria, or at least this portion of Bulgaria at the time, the castle was used to uh, store weapons. So it was a, a warehouse that also served as a prison and also as a residence for Osman, I think his name is Prezventugul. And it, uh, and it has been no longer used for defensive purposes since the end of the 18th century. So today, uh, Baba Vida Castle functions primarily as a museum and is probably the most popular tourist attraction in the city. As I said earlier, you can get a full tour with a guide from Viking. The cost for the guide was about 105 Canadian or about 80 US dollars. But if you wanted to do it on your own, it's only a 10, 15 minute walk from the ship where it's docked in the heart of Vidin. Vidin is really not that large of a town. And to get in, it was only seven lev, which worked out to be around $6 Canadian or about $5 US. So you don't get the guided tour, but they do have a, a central museum and lots of displays and uh, the displays are all in uh, Bulgarian as well as English. So you can learn a lot about the fortress uh, just by reading all the plaques. If you're going to tour the, uh, the citadel here, or the fortress I should say, even though they have handrails, I found the stones to be quite slippery, so you really do need a good pair of shoes with good traction. I used my running shoes and they were perfectly comfortable and fine for this. There's uh, uh, lots of ups and downs. You do have walkways, but you can also climb up into the towers on stairs and then exit those at uh, various locations. Now, if you really want to learn about the history of the castle and to see a lot of its artifacts, the central courtyard here has a number of different doors and in each one of these doors, there's a room with a display. Uh, so you can get to see things like uh, armament. You can learn about the history of the castle. They had a church, they had a torture chamber, they had a prison, for example. Uh, one of the most interesting parts that I really enjoyed is when they showed a bit of a history of the castle and how it was laid out when it was freshly built you'll find that in this particular room what was actually really nice about it is that they had some scale models as well as the information on the on the walls that describe the various aspects of the castle So you can see in this scale model, the fortress is in the center. It has a moat around it filled with water, but then they had exterior defensive walls all around the town itself. And you can see that the water came strictly or right from the Danube uh, around those fortifications. So you basically had two sections of fortifications, one these exterior wall to protect the town and then the larger castle in the middle. And then in this central section, they also had a jail and then they had some uh, mannequins to basically simulate what it would be like living in this particular section uh, of the fortress itself. I think the kids that you just saw really enjoyed this aspect of it. So a friendly place for the family as well as the kids if they like uh, things like this. So if you're into uh, the military, one of the nice things about the fortress is they had various displays and they showed the armament, ar armaments and dress of what uh, different uh, ranks of soldiers would be from what a civilian soldier would be to more of the professional soldiers and knights from various uh, time periods throughout the region. And of course, uh, no fortress or castle would be complete without uh, some church. Uh, so this area was, had a Christian background and so these artifacts and so forth were of, uh, from the Christian religion. And there was some uh, documentation describing that the patron saints of the area or people who became saints at one time or another. And they gave the history of Christianity around uh, Vedan. Thank <laughs> you. 
and no tour of any medieval fortress would be complete unless they had some sort of prison and torture chamber. And as you can see here, they have a man on the rack. So but that was, I think, the only uh, torture device that they actually had displayed here. Not sure what the significance of the rock with the skull is, but uh, anyways, <laughs> in place and just another thing to take a look at. Lots of different rooms to look at as well. They showed, uh, the, I believe this is the blacksmith shop, so they showed some tours there. Other aspects of the fortress I really enjoyed was all these ramps and tunnels and walls that you get through to. And as I said, there was nine different, I think, towers, three of which you, you could climb up and uh, inspect. So all in all, we probably spent a good hour, hour and a half wandering around the fortress on our own. It's like I said, only about a 10 or 15 minute walk from the ship. And if you have the time, highly recommend that you do it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. If you're interested in learning about the uh, Viking European Sojourn Tour, including its pre- and post-excursions, uh, please follow along. I'm trying to post a video on each day that we spent uh, on this particular trip.